This is Kurt Heisinger, accounting professor at Sierra College and author of Managerial Accounting. This video describes how to calculate certain profitability ratios and then how to use those ratios to analyze a company's performance. Profitability ratios are used to evaluate profit trends. It's a great way to evaluate profit trends and then to compare a, uh, so profit trends would be over a period of time, maybe from one year to the next over the course of three or four or five years for one company, and to compare a company's profits to competitors' profits. We're going to be looking at uh, five different profitability ratios as you see listed here. We're going to be looking at the gross uh, margin ratio, profit margin ratio, return on assets, return on common shareholders' equity, and earnings per share. So the next few slides will describe exactly how to calculate each of these ratios. The first ratio that we're going to talk about is the gross margin ratio. And the information that we need to calculate this comes exclusively from the income statement. So for all the ratios that I'm going to be talking about, not just with this video, but I've got a few other videos as well, um, we're going to be using Coca-Cola Company as the example. So here's Coca-Cola Company. This is their income statement. You can see that we have information for uh, 2014 and for 2013. Um, so we're going to be looking at exclusively 2014 with this ratio. I just have both years here so that you can see the information, but realize that we're going to be looking at the most current year for all of the ratios that we're going to be calculating. So the focus, as I said, will be on 2014, uh, this column right here. And for the gross margin ratio, the formula is gross margin divided by net sales. So this tells us when we're done, um, for each dollar of, of net sales, how much gross margin is earned. So gross margin here on this slide is, these are millions, 28 billion, 109 million. And we divide that by our net sales of 45 billion, 998 million. And that gives us a gross margin ratio of 0.611 and then to, to, to convert that to percent, so it's going to give us 0.611. And again, to convert that to percentage, just multiply by 100, and that will give us 61.1%. So Coca-Cola's gross margin ratio is 61.1%. Another way to look at it, for every dollar in net sales that Coca-Cola has, they generated six, about 61 cents in gross margin. The next ratio that we're going to look at is the profit margin ratio. And the profit margin ratio is calculated as net income divided by net sales. So this is different than operating income divided by net sales. This is the bottom line, net income divided by net sales. Again, we'll be using Coca-Cola throughout all of our examples when we're looking at ratios. And we're going to be looking at the most current year. In this example, it's 2014. And so to find the profit margin ratio, we're going to take net income, that's at the very bottom of the income statement, of these are millions, $7,124,000,000, and we'll divide that by net sales, and that is $45,998,000,000. That then results in an answer of point, I'll just do this a couple times so you see how to get to the percentage, it gives us 0.155, and so to get to the percentage, We'll multiply that by 100, and that gives us 15.5%. So the answer here is, for the profit margin ratio for Coca-Cola, is 15.5%. And what that tells us, one way to phrase it, is that for every dollar in net sales, up here at the top, for every dollar in net sales, Coca-Cola had about 15.5 cents in net income. Now we'll take a look at how to calculate the return on assets ratio. And there's a lot of information on this slide, but we're just going to pull pieces from Coca-Cola's balance sheet, which is what you see over here on the left, and uh, from Coca-Cola's income statement, which you see over here on the right. The, in the numerator, so return on assets, uh, the calculation in the numerator, we're going to see net income, and in the denominator, we will see average assets. So we need the income statement for net income, and we need the balance sheet to figure out average assets. So let's we'll, we'll focus in a little bit on this so you can see it a little better. Our net income is right down here for Coca-Cola. These are, again, our millions, seven billion one hundred twenty-four million dollars So I'll just uh, give you a little roadmap here. That's this number right here. 
Uh, and then we divide that by average assets, and that's going to come from the balance sheet. So I'll see if I can show you, you know, the whole thing here, but big enough that you can see it. So what you see on the balance sheet, we need to take these, uh, we've got 2014 right here, and 2013 right here. We need to take, uh, remember that the end of 2013 is the same as the beginning of 2014. And so we want to take the beginning of 2014, that's this 90 billion, 55 million, and, um, and then add the 92 billion, 23 million at the end of 2014 so we can get an average of our uh, total assets for the year. Now, if we had total asset information every day for the year, we would add all that up and divide by 365, but we don't. We have just this information you see here from their 10K report, and so we take these two numbers, and they're up here in the formula, right? Here they are. Add them together, and then divide by two, and that will give us the average total assets. And then once we uh, take that average, we'll, we'll look at net income, of the 7,124,000,000 million divided by the average total assets, and that gives us 0 0.078. And uh, I've, I've talked in the previous slides of how to convert to percentage, so I won't do that anymore. So that uh, converts to 7.8%. So that is Coca Cola's return on assets. And what that tells us is for every dollar that Coca Cola has in average assets, they generate about 7.8 cents in net income. So what we're trying to get at here is how productive is Coca-Cola with the use of their assets? How well are they able to generate net income from the assets that they have in place? Next we'll take a look at calculating return on common shareholders equity. And the formula is, is shown here down right down below, it's, it's right here, is net income in the numerator minus preferred dividends if they have any, and Coca-Cola does not. They don't have any preferred stocks, so they don't have any preferred dividends. And then we divide that by average common shareholders equity, and that's similar to finding average total assets that we saw on the previous slide, except here we're going to find average common shareholders equity. So we know where net income comes from. We saw that on the previous uh, slide. That's right here on bottom left on uh, Coca-Cola's income statement, that's the 70, uh, the 7 billion, 124 million, right? So that's where that comes from. And now we want to figure out, there's a big mess of numbers here, right? All of this information here, we want to figure out average common shareholders equity. And really what it amounts to is taking, let me, let me get uh, focused in on the balance sheet here, is taking the shareholders equity information, which is right here, for Coca-Cola and looking at the 2013 information that's over on this side remember that's the same as the beginning of 2014 and then uh, combining that with the end of 2014 information that's this right here and then dividing by two so that's what I know there are a lot of numbers up above there but that's really all that's happening is we're taking all of this information and combining it and then we are dividing by two so we get the average and as I mentioned, there's no preferred stock. You can see that down here in the balance sheet. So there's no preferred dividends. If there was preferred stock, we'd have to go find preferred dividends. And often that's disclosed either in the notes of the financial statements or in the statement of owner's equity. Um, but there's none here, so we don't have to worry about that. That's why this is zero up here, upper left, because we have zero preferred dividends. So we run the numbers. We take the net income of $7,124,000,000 minus preferred dividends of zero uh, and divide it by the average common shareholder's equity. And by the way, if we have preferred stock, we exclude that from this common shareholder's equity calculation because it is common, not preferred, uh, but we don't have to worry about that here. And we divide it by average common shareholder's equity, and that in this example yields a result of 22.3%. So for every dollar that Coca-Cola has in average common shareholder's equity, they generate about 22.3 cents in profit, in net income. The last profitability ratio that we're going to take a look at is called earnings per share. And in the business press, this is often referred to as simply EPS, but earnings per share. And most companies, when they release their earnings, this is how they release it. They release it in the form of earnings per share. How do we calculate earnings per share? Well, it is, as you see in the formula here, net income minus any preferred dividends. And I 
already talked about this on the previous slide, that Coca-Cola does not have preferred dividends. They don't have preferred stock, so they don't have preferred dividends. So that's going to be zero for Coca-Cola. If a company does have preferred stock, go to the Statement of Owner's Equity or the notes to figure out what they paid in the way of preferred dividends. So it's net income minus preferred dividends. And then we divide that by the weighted average common shares outstanding. Realize that's different than just common shares outstanding that can be found on most companies on their balance sheet right next to uh, common stock. Here, we're talking about weighted average common shares outstanding, and that's different. It's the average of common shares outstanding over the course of the year. Typically, um, the, the uh, well, first of all, net income comes right from the income statement. So we know that. We're going to get that from right down here, bottom right of the income statement. That's our net income, so we know where to pick that up. Um, but the what I started to say was the weighted average common shares outstanding, typically that can be found on uh, at the very bottom of the income statement. I'm talking about over here the common shares, weighted average common shares outstanding. Uh, I don't have it here on this income statement for Coca-Cola. This is a content, condensed version of their income statement just for the sake of being able to fit on these slides. But if you were to go to Coca-Cola's income statement in their 10K report and, and go down to the bottom, you'll see typically the weighted average common shares outstanding. If it's not there, it's typically in the notes to the financial statements. But again, it's different than the number of shares outstanding shown on the balance sheet, typically. So we take net income and we divide it by the weighted average shares outstanding. I'm giving you this number. It doesn't appear anywhere in this slide, um, but I told you where to find it. So that number for Coca-Cola was 4,387,000,000 shares. That's their weighted average common shares outstanding. If we do the math, and those are in millions, those shares, and as is net income. So we can simply leave it as it is here and we'll get the dollar per share. If we do the math, then Coca you'll find that Coca-Cola has a dollar sixty-two per share. That is their earnings per share. So what this indicates is if I'm an owner of one share of stock in Coca-Cola, they earned during the year 2014 a dollar sixty-two for that share of stock that I own. It doesn't mean that they paid it to me in the form of dividends. Rarely will a company pay out all of its earnings in the form of dividends. They'll probably pay some very small portion of that in the way of dividends. But that tells us that's how much that Coca-Cola earned per share of stock.